Hey guys, Jonathan here with TLD. Since the iPhone 5 launch, I've been getting so many questions on it. Is it worth the upgrade? How is the 4-inch retina display? How is the LTE? Is the camera better? How is the lightning port? So I'm going to give you guys my initial 24-hour experience with it and hopefully answer as many of those questions as I can. Now me personally, the first thing that came to my mind when I picked up the iPhone 5 for the first time was holy shit this thing is light, like no joke. It almost feels too light, but at the same time, it is built ridiculously solid. Whether you love Apple or you hate Apple, if you think iOS 6 is boring, I can dig that, I can see why, but you cannot argue with the beauty of these phones, the attention to detail, just the craftsmanship. Half of you wants to put them in a case to protect them, but the other half of you doesn't want to because they look so good and you couldn't see the phone otherwise. Next up is the 4-inch Retina display, which was a little weird at first for me, if I could be honest. It took a little bit getting used to, and I've used the Galaxy S3 for a while. It's even bigger, but for some reason, I think I was so used to the 3.5-inch screen on the previous iPhones that because this was longer, it threw me off a little bit at first. After using it for a few hours, you don't even think twice about it, but you do appreciate the extra screen real estate. Most noticeably, you'll see an extra row of icons on your homepage, and due to the fact that this is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, no longer do we see those little black bars across the screen. You get to see the full movie, so movies look damn good and the screen is definitely more vibrant. Now one of the other big additions to the iPhone 5 is the A6 processor, which is still dual core CPU, but don't be fooled, it is wicked fast. On Geekbench, I got a score of over 1600, which more than doubles the iPhone 4S, and actually even beat out my US version of the Galaxy S3. Everything is quick, zippy, responsive, it tears through games. Here's a little footage from Asphalt 7, and you can see this is optimized fully for the iPhone 5 display, so we get the full 1136 by 640 resolution, no lag, graphics look great. I also did a video on this game, Wild Blood, which is also optimized for the iPhone 5 display, and it looks immensely awesome. You gotta check this game out if you have an iPhone 5. The graphics look sick. Now, in addition to the 4-inch display and the A6 processor, the other huge addition to the iPhone 5 is LTE. And if you do have LTE in your area, it is crazy fast. With Verizon testing, I was getting consistent speeds of 30 down, 20 up, which is faster than most home connections. I personally don't have LTE for AT&T in my area, but I was in San Diego over the weekend with the Galaxy S3 and was getting speeds of like 50 down. It was nuts. So if you do have AT&T or Verizon, if you do have LTE speeds, they are crazy fast, like I said. Now as far as battery life goes, even with LTE I found it to be better than the iPhone 4S, even when getting it for the first time, not charging it at all, it lasted pretty much the whole day. After that I charged it up to 100%, unplugged it and left it off through the night, and I've heard horror stories with the iPhone 4S where you'd go to sleep with 100% battery, wake up and be drained down to like 30%. This actually only drained from 100 to 97%, so it definitely passed the test there. Now some more tweaks to the phone is the removal of the old 30 pin connector and the addition of the lightning port. And I agree, it's a pain in the ass to get all those adapters, but it's got to change sometime. It's not a huge deal to me. And I do like the fact that now you can just plug it in, not worry about ripping it out and not even worry about which way is right. You just plug it in and it goes. It's all digital, so it works no matter which way you plug it in. Also, the headphone jack is no longer at the top, it is now on the bottom of the phone. That's a la the Galaxy Nexus, so I'm not saying Apple innovated it or this is their invention or creation, but I do like the fact that the headphone jack is now at the bottom because it doesn't get in the way or cover your screen. And that leads me to the next improvement was the ear pods, because the old Apple headphones absolutely sucked. So I did review these actually about a week ago. They sound night and day better than the old headphones, so the fact that they do come with the iPhone 5 is a nice little cherry on top. Now one of the biggest meh factors on the new iPhone 5 is the rear facing camera. It's not a bad camera by any means, it's one of the best in the market, but for me personally it is one of the least compelling reasons to upgrade from the 4S to the 5. It's still 8 megapixels, it's still 1080p, yes it's improved, it's better on low light, it's better at autofocusing, but it is not drastic enough where I'd say go right now, put your iPhone 4S on eBay and upgrade to the iPhone 5 this instant. Now while the rear facing camera isn't a huge upgrade, the front facing camera now shoots in 720p, so let's go ahead and check out some footage. All right, so we're doing a quick front facing 720p test. I'm not gonna bore you guys too long with this, but you guys can see for a front facing camera that you can use with Skype or FaceTime, it actually is a huge improvement and does a good job in this aspect. Now with all that said, the iPhone 5 is an awesome phone. It's quicker, it's lighter, it's faster, it looks amazing. But if you are using an iPhone 4S right now, I wouldn't really say go out and jump and sell it and upgrade at this moment. Save your money, probably wait for the next iteration of the iPhone, maybe the iPhone 5S or whatever the hell they're gonna call it. With iOS 6 really not changing a whole lot, it's not gonna feel like a completely new experience. So with the next iteration, with new internals, hopefully they revamp iOS, that will feel like a new experience. If you're coming from an iPhone 4, a 3GS, a 3G, or maybe you don't like Android, the iPhone 5 is a completely solid and awesome option. If you're bored with iOS, 
iOS, I get that. There's tons of great Android phones right now. The Galaxy Nexus because of Jelly Bean, the Galaxy S3, and the HTC One X are all great options just in case you're bored with iOS and you want to check out Android for the first time. So hopefully this video helped you in your buying decisions. If you did enjoy it and you liked it and helped you out, you can help the channel out by liking this video, favoring it, sharing it, and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any more iPhone coverage or any other tech goodness. And I will see you guys later. If you guys are curious on which to buy as far as the iPhone 5, white or black, I'm actually working on that right now with a bunch of HD close-ups. Just really something to geek out over and get you guys a really close-up look at those two in comparison. So thank you guys again, and I will see you guys very soon with some more iPhone videos.